Hi, this is Luke for Production Expert, and this is getting three drum sounds for three different genres using your drum virtual instrument. So our first genre is hi-fi rock. So think Fleetwood Mac, Eagles, Queen, that kind of thing. Let's have a listen. Now the key to this sound is nice big low tuned drums with a good dollop of saturation as well, just to replicate the kind of analog signal path that this kit would have gone through. So I'm going to play you that again with some modern sounding drums and you can hear that they're just completely out of place. Now, this is all subjective, but for this particular genre, those pristine, kind of high-tuned, transient drum sounds don't really lend themselves to this genre at all. So let's put that back to my 70s sounding drums. Now, in many VIs, you can bus out your drums to individual outputs to your DAW. I happen to be using Easy Drummer 3, um, and if I jump into the mixer, you can see that I've got a little bit of extra routing going on here. So my snare drum mics are going out to an aux input in Pro Tools, as are my toms for separate processing. So on my snare drum, I have this snare buzz plugin to brighten it up. So this is without and with. And then downstream of that, we have the EQ on those snare mics. And you can see that it's not subtle, but the 200 hertz, the, the kind of low mid boost, that's really helping bring out that low tuning of the snare and with a hefty dose of top dialed back in as well. Because of the snare buzz plug in a bit further back upstream, this EQ has something to hold on to. So on my toms, at first glance, there's no processing going on. But if you look over to the right, there is quite a lot of drive going on as well. You can turn it up. But the point of that is just to sound right in context. So that is my 70s hi-fi rock sound. Now for jazz or acoustic styles, I'm looking for a more kind of ambient, soft, and possibly high tuned sound as well for my mix. Now, assuming we have authentic MIDI, then we're just down to the drums. So I've tuned my drums up a little bit. If I just click up here, you can see that. So that's cranked. And I've left the floor tom where it is. And then this kick, it's a big open sound. We don't want short sounds really for jazz. And there's the snare. Now, in terms of the mixer, I can do my mixing tricks either in my VI or in the DAW. But right now, notice how I'm using just a pair of mics at the moment. As soon as I bring in all the close mics, apart from the level jump, it can just sound a little bit too close. which can sometimes give the game away. So I am literally using just a pair of mics at the moment. Now this is a simple jazz trio mix. And at the moment I'm using a common room reverb to tie them all together. And that includes a send from the drums as well.
But what I can do is experiment with running my drums dry and then bringing in the ambience in my virtual instrument. I actually quite like that sound, but it may be just a little bit too much, a little bit too ambient and maybe a bit too big for what I'm going for. So I'm going to unmute the first pair of mics and just jump back in here and reinstate that send. And that's given me the correct perspective for what I'm going for. And talking of placement, it's important to use the correct placement for the genre that you're working in. So I do have a stereo sound here, but what I've decided to do is pan them because in a jazz trio, the drums would quite often be off to the right. So that's what I'm doing with mine. So some nice soft ambient sounds there, giving it a nice feel. And lastly, I have a heavy kit. Now this particular type of kit, it can suit many styles. So we're talking metal, hard rock, new metal, grunge, that kind of thing. But this type of kit is all about transient spikiness and also who has the low end in the mix. And by that, I'm talking about guitars, basses and drums. Now there's lots going on in terms of the big picture here, but there are three things that I think definitely need looking at. The first thing is the kick sound, because I think it's jumping out a little bit too much. The second thing is the snare drum sound. Um, it really hasn't got any bite or attitude or transient information going on. And the final thing is I want to get rid of some of the low end and give it to the other instruments. So if I come over here, I mean, that kick's good, it's got lots of attack, but it might be a little bit too much. Down here. Now this is actually a kind of classic smaller kick. And it's not the kind of thing that you would usually use for this style of music, but it sounds right. So I'm liking that. It has just the right amount of poke to get through everything else. Now this snare drum, it's just a little bit too soft. So again, I'm going to go through my snares and just get one that's working. I'm going to jump into a different room as well, see what I have here. Maybe... much better. That other one was a bit too soft at the front and this one is definitely doing the business for me. Now if I mute the drums you'll be able to hear just how much low end there is going on in the bass and the guitars. So to maintain some clarity in the mix, I've got this low shelf going on and it's not that subtle. It's, you know, kind of six dB down and it's taking out most of the bottom half of the range. And if I take that out, you can hear what it's doing. I mean, the drums sound great in isolation without that shelf, but the thing here is I'm trying to sit the bass and the guitars around the drums. So 
sounding good there, much punchier, and also a lot clearer in the bottom end. So that's three different sounds for three different genres using your drum virtual instrument. To get the full story and to find out more, head over to the Production Experts blog.